Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab on here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Taurus here and in today's video I want to let you all know first the look that you are seeing now will be in my next video. This is going to be my first impressions on the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. I should have that up on Tuesday but today I wanted to go ahead and bring you all a quick video because I was having some issues behind the scenes and I couldn't get that video edited in time but I wanted to make sure I got something up for you all today on Saturday. This video is being recorded, edited, and uploaded on Saturday. Baby, things then came up. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna be able to get them handled today, but I got to keep y'all all updated. And although these are videos that are truly fun to watch, in my opinion, sometimes they can be really embarrassing to make because today I want to talk to you all about popular products that I own and have never used, part three. The fact that I can even do a part one of a collection like this where I can say there's items in my makeup collection that I've never used is really sad because a lot of times, well, I'm not going to say a lot of times. For me, most times I was buying makeup way faster than I could use them, but I started realizing since I started my no buy that I'm truly going through my collection, finding things that I already have that matches a lot of the things that are being released and realizing I truly don't need as much as I used to buy. And sometimes it shocks you when you come across a product and you're like either A, I completely forgot that I had you, or B, I honestly thought that I did use you when I you know, picked you up, bought you, and before I put you in a drawer because most of my makeup now is head in drawer, I mean, is housed in drawers now instead of out in the open on shelves where I can see them. And so a lot of times you forget what's in a drawer until you actually open it up. So we're gonna start this off. I thought I only had 10 items, but I can tell you I know I have more than that. It's probably closer to 15. But we're gonna start off with the neutral items first and then work our way to colors just because I wanted to make sure I had them separated. But it's a couple of nice items on this list. But before we get started, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel, honey. We're trying to make sure we keep those numbers growing. Make sure you also give this video a thumbs up if you like videos like this. And if you would like to see a tutorial on any of these products, make sure you leave me a comment down below so that I can get that going for you. But enough talking, honey. Let's get into the first product. Palette number one. And I believe everything is a palette except one item, which was a custom made palette by myself. But number one, the Maybelline News of New York palette. This is a staple in the drugstore, honey. I think I've heard a lot of people compare this to the, I think it's the Too Faced Born This Way um, eyeshadow palette. But when you look at this, this is a beautiful neutral color story. Let me bring that closer to you. You see we have mattes, we have metallics, we have brow bone shades. The only the only two things that I don't see in this palette for my personal taste is an extremely dark brown and a matte black. Although we have this shade here, Voyager, and this shade here, Self Starter, for me having hooded lids, being a person of color and someone who prefers jewel tones, I really love deepening up my crease in my outer V with a dark brown or a black. So for everyday neutral you know, colors, because it is called Nudes of New York, this would be fabulous. It's just that the colors are a little too light and a little too natural for myself. As you can say, I mean, see, I skipped eyeshadow today because I'm like, I wanted to go ham. Could not figure out which one of these palettes I wanted to use. But first one here, Maybelline News of New York. Never used her, but I have her. And everybody I know who's used it said it's absolutely fabulous. The price, the color story, the formula. I just don't know what she like, honey. But by making this video, it puts it out there in the universe that I need to go ahead and use her so that I don't have her just sitting over here wasting money and good product. Number two, how can I say this? 
I bought it just to support an influencer. I think this may be the only palette that I have from the brand. I am someone who absolutely love influencer collabs, especially, especially if they are makeup artists. I got to support my people, and that is for number two, the Buxom and Ash K Home Palette. Now, for a moment, it seemed like down my Instagram feed, all I saw was either pictures of Ash K Home or pictures of her work. It seemed like everybody was supporting and following her once they found out she was working with Kim K. And at first, I was gonna skip this palette. There's no point in lying. I wanna show you what she looks like on the inside. And she pretty for professional uses for everyday looks, but as a basic warm neutral palette, And then you want to give us a pop of blue. Oranges and blues are my two least favorite eyeshadow colors. But I can understand why a makeup artist will want something like this in their arsenal. This is something you could take with you and it'll probably work on almost any complexion. There are some more neutral tones down here on the bottom, which is what I would gravitate toward. That orange there, that blue there may never get used messing with me. But... This is a beautiful palette. I got it half price because like I said, I was gonna skip it. I'm like, okay, congratulations to Buxom. Congratulations to Ash. But these aren't my type of shades, honey. It's not enough variety. It's not enough depth for me. But they was like, half price, come get it. And I was like, here's my card. Swipe, thank you. So I have this palette and truth be told, I got her just to have her because I'm not even inspired to pull her out. I don't even want to lie to her. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and look. Only reason I would ever use this palette is just to tag them online and say that I used it and show that I supported Ashley. I believe that's her real name. I hope so. I'm calling her Ashley. I just know her name is Ashley Home, but that's a neutral palette that does nothing for me. This one here is absolutely beautiful, and I thought I did use her before. Come to find out I didn't. We're going to pour it in. I know I didn't because of this right here. If I would have used it, I would have tossed that out. So let me go ahead and do that now to remind me to go ahead and pull her out because I've always wanted to know what this palette looks like on the skin because people use it all the time. Let me show you all the front. This is the Transition Palette by Dominique Cosmetics. And I believe I've even been seeing this on sale a lot lately. Um... I'm not sure which subscription box has it, but they have it where you can add this to your order for a discounted price. I'm not subscribed to any of those boxes or anything, but when you get to the inside, it's like, baby, look at these colors. Now, this is an all matte palette, and when it was sold, I believe it was described as an all face palette because many people use these colors as bronzers, as contours, as eyeshadows, you know, just all over face palettes. Some of these colors, even like some of these rosy colors here would be beautiful as blushes. I never used her. You would think this would be something I could travel with because whether I want to go warm or cool, even if I want to go grungy, they gave me that nice mustard yellow shade. I got my blacks, I got my grays for cool tone looks. So whether I want to go warm, neutral or cool, this palette will get it done for me. Now, this is something that I look at and I go, I see the inspiration. I want to use you. It's just that because I have so many Dominique cosmetic palettes and they all sit in a drawer. And with this being the largest one, it sits in the back of the drawer so that it doesn't fold over or block the view of everything else. So I really need to pull this out because the fact that we get bra bone highlight shades, we get crease shades, we get transition shades. I could use this with almost anything. So I need to make sure after this video, I set her right here on this shelf and not back in the drawer because she's absolutely stunning. Next up is a palette that I bought because I have a friend who absolutely loves, loves, loves yellow eyeshadow. And for a moment, that's all she wore. And I remember everybody was going crazy over, which one was it? The ColourPop Uh Huh Honey palette. Never did a tutorial on that one, but I have that one too. The thing is, I believe you can still get that one. This one here, I don't believe you can grab anymore, but I got it before it discontinued. And that is the Midas Cosmetics Lemonade Palette. First off, 
I grabbed it when I heard that Midas Cosmetics was going to be shutting down. It's a nice and beautiful blessing to find out that they are just going to be rebranding now. Thanks to all the support and sales they got when they were told that they were going to shut down. Everybody went in and bought a bunch of stuff. So they're going to be able to come back out. I believe they're going to change the name as well. But I wanted to grab as many of their items as I could before they got rid of them. And I want to show you all this is what this palette looks like on the inside. Baby, y'all talking about skirt, skirt, and I truly don't even know exactly which one came from which spot. Oh, I could tell this one came from here by based on the glue, but I ain't gonna lie to y'all. That just scared the dog out of me, especially considering the fact this is the second time this has happened with a Midas palette. I believe I have the Smoky Glow palette, and when I showed y'all that palette, one of my smoky glow shades fell out so now i'm scared to even tip this over because i've never used her and shadows are falling out so we're gonna be careful this time and we're gonna make sure we pull it up like this make sure we get closer you all see nine shades of yellow you have a nice deep crease shade you have lid shades but i've never used this palette here and that's because she was in the back of her drawer and it's like torrents how often do you want to do an all yellow look? It's very rare. I don't mind a yellow transition or a yellow lid, but to do a palette completely based off those would test my creativity. And so I'm like, Torrance, you go keep her because you are inspired by her. It's just, I sit back and wonder like, how often would I actually use her though? Not sure, but Midas Cosmetics Lemonade Palette, we're gonna put her to the side. And we're going to make sure we're going to grab us some glue. So let me put you over here. Because I'm gluing those shades back in. On another note, something telling me like, we should just see how the other ones pop out. But you know what? No, we're going to keep her in here just for that. Last, this is the last neutral palette on the list. And the thing is, out of all of them, this is probably the one I've heard the absolute most hype out of. For most people, this is their favorite palette by that brand. I know what it looks like on other people's skin because I've used it on family and friends, not my particular palette, but theirs because we all bought it. But on my complexion, I have no idea what this palette looks like. And that would be the Sigma Ambiance palette. The packaging on this palette is beautiful. The color story in here, as someone who's not the biggest fan of orangey warm neutrals, this is beautiful to me. To me, she does lean a little warm, but she also has her neutral shades in there, and this isn't an orange palette, which is what excites me. You have some yellow tones in there, you have some red tones in there, and to me, this is much more of, I would say, a much more comfortable neutral for me. I still prefer it not to be quite as warm against my skin, but the formula, Beautiful. The blend is beautiful and anytime I've created looks on other people with this palette, it was stunning. It's just, man, has never been used. I don't even think I've ever even taken the brush out and washed it in man. so... Mm. But all I'm telling you, if you had this palette at home, this shade here, Mary Go, she absolutely beautiful across the lid. This is my best friend's favorite shade out of them all. Next up, these last few, how can I put it? The first two I'm gonna show y'all are colorful palettes. The rest of them, green palettes because green is my favorite eyeshadow color and it was shocking to me to sit back and look and go torns. You mean to tell me you got green eyeshadow palettes you've never worn? Yes, ma'am, honey. I'm embarrassed to say it, but I do. But first up, for the rainbow palettes, I haven't used her yet simply because she's new. She's the newest one to my collection. I was so happy to receive her because I've already done a look with their first palette. I can make sure I leave that one up here. The brand followed me. I was too excited because I did not expect things to get noticed like that. But this is the Primal Palette by Blend Bunny Cosmetics. First off, let's just get into that packaging. You see the way that glossy texture has it looking like the butterfly wings are just 10 out of 10 on how beautiful this is on the outside before you even get inside. 
But once you do, toss this little sheet, y'all know. That's always the telltale sign of if I used it or not. No mirror, but I don't use those, so it doesn't matter to me. But look at this. Look. Honey, a lot of companies try to do rainbow palettes, but it seems like, for me, Viseart and Blend Bunny, it's hurt the game. Viseart tends to do either all matte or all shimmers, so I prefer them with the all mattes. But when it comes to the mixed palettes, sis, look at that color story. Transition crease, outer V, and lid shades for every color. And then if you want to lighten or darken anything, you got these huge pans of black and white at the bottom. I can't wait to get into it. I cannot wait to get into this palette. I've just been busy. I've been trying to get other tutorials up, but I promise you all, before the end of September come, she gonna be up. She gonna be up. And I think Blend Bunny has come out with three or four palettes and I have them all. So I wanna try to get a tutorial up for them all. But this Primal palette, she will be up pretty soon because I know the formula gotta be beautiful. Their other palettes are absolutely stunning. And the color story and packaging on that has me so excited. I'm like, enough. I just want to open this up right now and start using it, but I know I got to finish this video because that row of metallics at the bottom, the way they are just shining, it's just, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And another thing that's beautiful, and it makes me feel foolish to say it, but I cannot believe I have not used these multi-chromes on my eyes. Um, when I first got into makeup, my favorite finish of eyeshadows was dual chromes because I felt as if I was paying for one shadow but getting two colors and that seemed like more bang for my buck. Over the years, multi-chromes have come in and they have taken over the makeup world because the amount of shine you get, the amount of flip you get with some of these brands is unreal. And it seems like, although they are, mo I believe for me so far, multi-chromes are the most expensive eyeshadow formula that I buy. But it seems like a lot of matte and shimmers are catching up in price. So if you're going to buy an individual, why not make it worthwhile? And that is why I have this custom palette here from, where are you all from? Davina Cosmetics. I was almost said the wrong brand. Look at this palette here. I put these in a small Z palette from Ulta. The thing is, I have eight shadows here. And the reason I've never used them is because I could not collect them all. I'm a spoiled, bitter little brat, but I spoiled myself. And I want you all to just get a look at these eight shades here. I'm not sure if it's gonna show the flip on her um, as much as you can truly see it in person. I know it looks like some of those shades is coming off like, baby. When I tell you all eight are multi-chromes, my favorites are the four on the bottom because they have the strongest green tone to them. Oh wait, I think that's showing what that, some of those flips look like from way back here instead of up close. But baby, these are from Davina, like I said. The thing is, this is eight of them. They had nine, and every time they try to come out with a bonus, I believe it's called the Aurora Flare Kit. And that kit only contains five or six of the shadows, and I wanted them all. And I could never catch the bundle and all the singles when they were all in stock. So I would buy, say, two this time, then come back and get one of those, then come back and get one of those. And when I realized I could never get that ninth shadow, I put them to the side and I kept telling myself, I'm not gonna use any of them until I get all of them. That ninth color that I never get was discontinued. So I got bitter and kept telling myself, if I can't have them all, I don't want none of them. I'll put them in a drawer, I'll put them up. And my best friend, every time she come over, she love them. She play with them all the time. And I'm not sure if I even have a video of me swatching and playing with them a few weeks ago, but I never put them on my eye. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've never tried out Cleona's um, multi-chromes either, because I've heard Cleona and Davina are like up there in the ranks. But that bundle that I wanted from Cleona is never in stock either. I believe it's like a bundle of 20 or 30 shadows and usually I can find 10 or 20 of them individually available, but because I was so bitter on not getting all of them for this brand, I never even shot from Cleona because I'm like, if I can't have them all, I don't want any. And I have to realize, 
that ain't stopping these from sitting here and rusting away because baby eyeshadows don't last forever so to have eight multi chromes which i'm not sure what they retail for now i believe they retail somewhere between 15 and 25 dollars a piece to know how expensive this was it's like Taurus, you're gonna have to get over the fact you don't have that ninth shadow because she ain't here she ain't coming back but you got these so you either need to use them and pass them along or you know I, I didn't put them both. I said use them or pass them on. Those are the two options. And truth be told, when I sit back and think about it, all matte palette that inspires me I should use, I can take and put this together, all shimmer palette that I've never used, and come up with a look. And then that could be one video, two brands, not come out the way. And it's like, why well, I didn't think of that before. So let me go ahead and put these two to the side. And if you all would like to see a tutorial using the Dominique Transition Palette and the Davina Aurora Flare Collection, just let me know and we can put that to the side and make that happen. But enough of the colorful ones. It's all about my favorite color of eyeshadow and that's green, honey. As far as I'm concerned, there will never be a prettier eyeshadow color than green because that's what I feel as if gives me a pop of color and complements my skin the most. So we're going to start off with the most affordable one of them all, the one I've never tried, but the one that was recommended to me the most, and that is the Pro Fusion Emeralds Palette. Now, it took me forever to get this because every time I tried to find it in store, she was sold out. Every time I ordered it to the house, at least one shadow came broken, and I was like, I'm not about to open this container if I see that dark shimmery green is already shattered because once I open it, now I get dust everywhere. No, ma'am. It took a friend to go to a location that wasn't even in the city to see it in store. And I told her, please grab that for me because every time I try to get it, I can't, you know, get a hold of it and get it in a solid piece. So now that I have it, this is the Emeralds palette by Pro Fusion. Let me go ahead and give you all a close up view of what she looks like on the inside. Beautiful green color story, and this is truly green. The one thing that I loved most about this is that they didn't waste any time with 15 browns. We got that one matte brown here, but everything else is beautiful, has a green tone to it, so I'm like, that's how you do it. If the drugstore brands can get it right, what is so wrong with these other brands trying to get it going? Not sure, but I am so happy they have that one there. I've tested out the Profusion formula. It was with like a cranberry red base palette and I don't remember the name of it, but the quality wasn't the greatest. It was nice enough to, you know, not take it back to the store. So I'm like, even if I don't like this one, I don't think it'll be the worst. So I'm going to probably keep it. Next up. I was shocked I hadn't used it, but then I had to sit back and think of like Torrance. When is the last time you used the palette from her brand at all? Huda Beauty Khaki Haze. One point in time, I used to collect every palette this brand launched. Eventually, I started realizing y'all are launching way too many and the formula not as good as it used to be. Once upon a time, if she put it out, I used to absolutely love it, not question it. Then it just seemed like she kept switching up the formula or coming out with the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So I'm like, I'm over it. But I want to show you all the packaging because it is stunning. And on the inside, the color story is stunning. I love me greens. I love me a green eyeshadow palette. But when I look at this, it's like, honey, although everything has a green hue to it, you can see where a lot of those are dual chromes and they have to shift to the green other than that. They look rather natural. So it's like, It's some green tour, but to me, this khaki haze is for the girl who wants to try green, but not in love with greens. And so I have her, but yeah. Next up, I can't wait to get into this one because the brand, I did a tutorial for their palette recently. It was for their Michaela Part 2 palette. I'll leave that right here, honey. You got to check that out. And because I love that one so much, it has me wondering. How y'all dirty Martin? Dirty. dirty martini palette gonna be baby i don't know how i said dirty martini wrong that fast but the packaging on this 
Baby, get me want to take a sip. The container it came in was absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. But look at this color story. Look at her. Baby, look at those greens in this palette. I cannot wait to test this palette out. She is beautiful. She's beautiful. The only thing I personally would have preferred is just because I love a matte black with anything, but considering I got plenty of matte blacks, especially several from Glam Light, she don't need it and I cannot wait to get into this palette because Glam Light's shimmer formula is absolutely beautiful. Greens is my favorites. And that Michaela Part 2 has so many greens, I skipped over this to get that one going. But trust me, I got to get her out there because I've been looking at that chocolate one and that purple one too but I ain't got the budget for it. So I'm like, Torrance, look at what you got, stay grateful and keep it going. This next one, baby, it seemed like everybody went crazy over this palette. And even when it sold out, people were selling it online for so much that the brand had to bring it back because you can't have scalpels out here making all your money, ColourPop. And that is the Disney Tinkerbell Sprinkle a Little Magic. As somebody who grew up truly believing I was a fairy and a unicorn all in one. Look at this. Baby, she looked like, oops, I didn't do it because I am completely innocent. And I believe her, honey, she ain't did nothing wrong, especially with all this green going on. And let me lift this up and make sure. Sis, the packaging and the color story on this was so beautiful they even have a little fairy right there on the mirror i want to make sure i cover that so i don't blind you all but get into the color story honey we have neutrals we have greens the only thing that i think they could have done a little better is with those two mattes at the top those neutrals one could have been much darker than the other so you can use them both at the same time because i truly believe on my complexion there's no need to use both of these I think this should have been a really dark brown for the crease and you wouldn't have been able to say nothing about this palette but i've seen people sell this thing for like 150 dollars online and i'm like glad i got mad because sis i wasn't paying that price next up baby i know i need to get a tutorial up on this one i really wanted to but i was going through some things and i'm like i am so glad i got it before she sold out because the brand has never put out a bad palette to me. And that is going to be the Otis Eye and Angelica Hella Palette. First off, the packaging, top notch beautiful, top notch beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. This is something that you either are going to find absolutely beautiful or absolutely horrific. And I think she's stunning, honey. And on the inside, we got a mirror. And this plastic piece is taped on here, so I'm just going to lift that up so I don't mess anything up. But look at that. This is how you do a palette. You give us shades that give us variety. You can use any two mattes in this palette together and not have to worry about them muddying up together because they have depth and dimension. You can go all green if you want. You can go all pink. Or you can mix things up, and that's what I'm talking about. I should be able to go in and pick any two colors and not look like I blended the same things together. And Angelica don't play. Out of all of the people on YouTube, y'all know when it comes to color, I love me some nicking tutorials. But Angelica, she brings it to me because she likes greens as much as I do. You know, Nikki tend to be more on those pinks and blues. And I couldn't do it. Last but not least, before my camera cut off, because baby, we about to be gone, is this palette here. Oh, excuse me. I seriously thought I had already gave it away, but I didn't. And the reason is, is because I don't have all these shades in another palette. This very last one is gonna be the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette here. And the reason, as you can see, Wilderness, green packaging, so you know what I was after. Look at how pretty she is, and I never got the chance to use her. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of blues at the top, but I love blues when they complement a green. And usually reds are something I try to avoid. But I'm like, Taurus, when is the last time you wore red eyeshadow? This palette challenges your creativity 
and I want to use it. And the only reason I thought I gave it away is because I have the larger earthy palette. But then I realized all of these shades are not in the earthy palette. This shade raw is, but that shade poppy isn't, which is why I kept it. And I really need to go ahead and use it then since I still have her. And it looks like our camera is about to cut off and I don't want things to shut off because this is an unedited video. So with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time,